I swear it's nothing to be worried about. Like, I, I promise you, I, I speak on behalf of all of us. When I say we just chopping it up, I promise you, we just chopping it up like... <laughs> Round table discussion, <laughs> it's all or nothing Building over thoughts you wouldn't walk through the public Connected like the plug is The outlet is the line from top to bottom It's whatever's designed and it's Gucci behind these doors up here Get it all in the clear, we'll check something But it's all sincere To so book them, Danny <laughs> Welcome to Chopping It Up, here at Faded I'm your host, Gucci My co- <laughs> first lady Danny And my co-host, Sincere, couldn't be here today we're going to jump into the topic of communication today and what really, you know, what we expect to see from it and how we go about doing it and communication. What's that mean to you, lady? Communication means um, telling people what you need, how you need it, and uh, letting them know in timely manners. Um, not just in relationships, but, you know, your job at work. Communicating with your boss, letting him know what you need, your peers, your children, your parents, um, talking and letting them know what's needed and expected out of the relationship. Gotcha. See, with me, communication is me just trying to articulate a thought and hopefully that you relay exactly what I'm saying or what I'm trying to put out because it could be verbal, it could be physical. Um, I feel like clarity is key to that because if you're not clearly communicating you can really get misconstrued with the message and sometimes you know we don't need that we don't we don't need that mishap in the communication because trying to clear that up becomes more of a ordeal than it needs to be right because people communicate differently um some people need more verbalization and there's other people that needs to see how you move needs to see how um uh, you react to something. And um, there's also some people that, um, you know, speak, will say one thing and move another way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do feel like um, in all ships, and when I say ships, I mean relationship, relationships, friendship, yes. co-workership. All that shit. Um, all the ships. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, a ship is a, a, a thing to take you somewhere, a voyage. Um, and if we ain't all on the same boat and ain't communicating, that shit gonna go paths. down real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you need someone to communicate with you? I, I personally, I, um, my first thing is, you know, like if I don't know you that well, I'm watching how you move. I'm not, I'm listening to what you're, what's coming out your mouth. Don't get me wrong, but um, I'm more focused on how you move. How you move. Right. Um, actions speak louder than words. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And if, and especially if it's something new, you know, you can be in a new relationship. You don't know how that per that person can say one, one thing, thing and do something. And I think that's how you even get to gauge their character because you're saying one thing and you're doing something else. So it's like, do I trust your words? Can I trust your words? Can I trust the things you say? But I can trust what you're doing because I'm clearly seeing what you're doing. Right. So, and if your words and your actions don't match up to me. That's a character flaw I really can't work, work around because to me you're just lying. I mean, that's what it seems. I mean, that's the like textbook lying to me. Right. But and I don't like liars too much, so I, I try not to, you know, uh, involve myself with liars or people that just can't make their words and their actions match up. I don't need the confusion altogether. Right. Some people, um, you know, not just uh, you know to make them liars, but some people really don't know how to communicate with words. That too. And, you know, um, for different reasons, you know, we've even touched up before on, um, like, you know, mental health. Yeah. Um, You know, you can have somebody who's, uh, you know, bipolar or um, autistic. A sociopath. (laughs) Or a sociopath. (laughs) Um, They um, they communicate differently. It doesn't mean that they don't, um, you know, know how to communicate or, uh, you know, sometimes signals can get mixed. And it's about knowing that person, too. That, too. Yeah, you have get, to getting to know that person and their style of communication. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like I'm gonna lose patience trying to figure out your style of communication when it's confusing. So my, my slogan in life is the easiest way to lose me is to confuse me. Once you start to confuse me, I don't want to be bothered. I'm gonna I'm gonna escape. Right, I'm, right. I'm gonna find something that makes sense. <laughs> it's just it makes it's just life is easier that way. When it makes sense, I can go along with it. I get that. Yeah. I um. So the main things that we usually talk about is relationships. So yeah. communication and relationships, what does that look like to you? 
Ooh, communication in relationships is being able to be honest without being judged because that shit sucks. Like, we, anybody perfect, anybody no angels. We got things going on in our lives and in our head at all times. And if I'm not able to communicate in a relationship, whether it's an actual, you know, romantic relationship or partnership or anything, if I can't express myself without you feeling the need to understand what I said to judge it versus trying to understand what I'm saying, where I'm coming from, so that way you can get a better understanding of who I am, it's a, it's a no-go. Right, it's right. Not. I, I'm more of a, um, uh, again, I'm more of a uh, how you move. Um, you can say what you say all day. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm going to hear what you're, what, what you're um, saying, but I'm more focused on how you move, how, that, how your words match your actions. You couldn't judge somebody. It's cool, though. It's all right. Not, not even, <laughs> it's it, not judgment. Um, a lot of people will say one thing and, and again, move another way. Move another way. No, and you're I, right. I, 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 I choose your movement before I choose, choose your, your words. Because talk is cheap. Motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> talk is highly cheap out here, man. You got that stuff all day. <laughs> right. That's just like, you know, I can even give the example of like, you know, within the work field. Um, you know, your boss wants to sit there and, you know, you, you know, do this, do that. And they say, you know, but if the company and everything is moving this way, I'm going to, you know, my job, my position is going to be better if I do what, you know, is physically needs to be done. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I, I guess I can get that about work because, you know, every company has their, what does it call it, the... Um, the mission statement, but their mission statement and what they actually do kind of sometimes don't coincide. Like our mission statement is to take care of the community all while taxing everybody. <laughs> they won't tell you the part about taxing everybody top dollar to make sure that they, you know, do what they do for the community. And right. Of course, you, you, you'll find a conflict in it. So sometimes I find my, that, that's why I'm self-employed to this day. I, I try to do what I say and say what I do. And you don't find that in a lot of places. Like I say, I'm, I'm here to cut the hair. I'm going to cut the hair. <laughs> That's what right. I'm going to do. Right. I'm not about to give you a mission statement to make it seem like I'm the superhero in the community. And all I want to do is cut the hair. Absolutely. And I also want to make my money. I think you just be better off being honest. And not being honest, but your words and your actions being, you know, one. Right. So, but no, I, I, I definitely get what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, what else about communication? I mean, what different ways are the community to communicate? We got verbal, we got physical. I mean, you got, uh, I don't know. That, that, those are the only two ways I really know how to communicate, but I do find myself withdrawing, I guess, messages from different people different ways. Like, I guess that's all verbal and, and physical. Um, your actions, like you said, being like, if they don't coincide, how do you formulate how to deal with a person? Uh, what other communication styles should we look for? I mean, I definitely want to make sure I'm picking up what someone's trying to put down. Absolutely. And I don't want to be the person missing the cue, but I found myself in many situations like, oh, I shouldn't be here because <laughs> this isn't making sense at fucking all. But everybody else around me, like, oh, this is everything. I'm like, I missed it. I come, it's over my head and I hate it because I don't want to be the outcast in such situations, in any situation, for real, for real. Right. But right. what other kind of communication styles should we be aware of like what, what can you think of that you've seen I don't know um let's even think about like like you have kids that are in school yeah right so how do you communicate with the teachers and things of that nature electronically electronically <laughs> <laughs> electronically so when there's like for instance like you know when um my when my son was in school my son's not in school anymore but when he was in school I, uh, I electronically yeah. communicated with the teachers also but I communicated with his teachers more through him through okay someone. so okay so you like, kind of like use him as a, a proxy pretty much yeah you know how they stick the note in the book bag yeah. Um, yeah, or, teacher. um, you know, he, you know, he would come to me and be like, you know, Hey mom, my teacher said, you know, we need this for this class project that we're doing. Um, so, um, is can communication is communication through someone a good form? I think so. There's been many situations where I needed to convey a message to somebody, but that somebody was so anti me. And the only way I can get them to understand a situation that we're all involved in is to pass it through somebody that they feel comfortable dealing with. Right. So I would present it to this person and they present it to that person. Oh, that was a great idea. They wouldn't say that I said it because if they said it, I said it, it'd be something. No, that was horrible. Why would you do that? 
right, <laughs> yeah. right. You ever played the telephone game? Yes, with your kids? yes, yes, yes. And by the time the message got back to you, it was completely fucked completely up. Completely different than what you were expecting. <laughs> yeah. And people get in their feelings because of that. Yeah. You know, like, you know, with the miscommunication of, you know, going through other avenues than just being face to face. Being face to face, yeah. You know? I know uh, I'm sensitive about miscommunication. Like, I hate when I'm trying to get to a point and everything other than what I'm saying is being alerted. Like, maybe the tone of voice I used or the way my shoulders popped up and my chest poked out. Sometimes I just need you to listen to the words coming out my mouth. And everything, the attributes that come with what I'm saying are literally just attributes, but the verbal word-for-word -word communication, the things that are coming out my mouth are going to match my actions when it's time so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to do it. Right. I've always been that person so that way there would be no in between but then some people find different ways of making your communication or understanding something that you probably weren't even trying to convey. Right. And that's right. where sometimes I think a lot of miscommunication gets messed up. Absolutely. Right. Right. Then and my, mine's is um, so one of my pe you know pet peeves is um if you do something or say something and you communicate something with me and then you and just to use an example something we were just talking about um and then you turn around and you say you know oh i have to cancel the plan or i have to do or the plans need to change i'm going to move accordingly and and when i move accordingly after that don't get mad at me because get I mad moved, at me. Yeah. had to move that way because plans change because things happen you know, and um, maybe that's a part of communication also. Yeah, know? yeah. I feel like with communication comes, you know, effective decision making. So, you know, in that situation, you effectively and efficiently did the best you could with your time. Right. You know, the person right. changed plans last minute. So your plans and everything changed last minute. And maybe they don't respect how you respond afterwards, but it's not for them to respect, respect or not. Respect my time. Respect <laughs> that person Respect my time. Please. Because I try to respect everyone's time. And no one's getting a damn second back. So please respect time. And right. I think that's like, I think the proper use of communication is to pretty much effectively and efficiently utilize your time. Like, you know, I'm the kind of person that don't want to find something out last minute. I don't want to be the person at the end of the stick who didn't figure out what everyone's trying to, you know, say in the beginning. Or maybe it wasn't verbally said, or maybe it wasn't physically said. But to get to the end of, you know, doing what we were doing, to find out that this was not the end game, like, oh, shit, you right. just wasted my time. And with any other resource in between, but I'm really, really a stickler about my time. Like, I need my time. My heart beats with so many times a second, and I've got but so many heartbeats in a lifetime. Can't <laughs> so get time back. Can't man. get time back. So one thing I try to do with my communication is make sure that I'm, you know, effectively communicating so no one, no one's wasting time. We're not wasting time because I really respect everyone's time. Absolutely. And, you know, I like my time respected likewise. So I, I, I understand that a great deal. I also feel like a lot of relationships um, end because of the communication. Oh, man, I've lost so many clients because of communication. Okay, there I've you lost go. so many clients because of communication. It'll be, uh, they book an appointment, and I've got priorities that I'm not going to lie, come before work. Like, I have a household, and I feel like, you know, family comes first. Absolutely. So things are happening, and I'll find myself having to cancel, and it might just be within the last minute of their time. It's not to disrespect their time, but I'll let them know as soon as I find out. But sometimes they, you could have told me sooner. I can only tell you what I know as soon as I know it. And I, in between doing so, they just feel like the time was wasted. And then I, you know, I can't get that back. Or I have someone tell me, all right, I'll be at the shop at this time. And I have a whole booking system just to kind of circumvent um, wasting my time. So, but, you know, I have people that can't get on the booking app sometimes to do what they got to do. And I have a whole stipulation of, you know, booking an appointment three hours out at least. Some people want to do it within like 45 minutes. So you'll sit around waiting 45 minutes. And sometimes it'll be at the last cut of the day. And I'm trying to be out of here at 7 o'clock. I'm sitting here till like 6.30, 6.45, 7 o'clock. And if you're not here by 7 o'clock, I leave. By that time, though, I'm already pissed off because I could have left before. You know, I don't want to. Right. No one wants to sit around and waste their time. I could be cooking dinner or doing other things, whatever. So, so part of communication is um, understanding. Understanding. Yeah. Understanding. Um, being, com uh, you know. I might be using the wrong word, but being compassionate about what other people are going through and what they're doing. That too. That too. I feel like we're in a, that microwave state of life where everything is instant gratification. Right. 
Like, I've got people that know I take appointments, and I'm primarily appointments, and I'll be cutting ahead, and I have a walk-in, walk in the door, and I'll let them know I'm not going to be free till like, 4 o'clock, but I've got another barber. Or some people will walk in the door and want to instantly get their hair cut. Like, it'll be, well, we're moving, and instantly want to get their work done. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to wait, because clearly I can't just stop what I'm doing to get to you. But um, I feel like the compassion on their part is out the door because they feel like, you know, I got the money. I control the situation. You do. Or you can go somewhere else and control that situation, however you want to go about it. Right. I mean, but, you know, I feel compassion is a, is a, a big thing when trying to com- communicate, too, because even in being compassionate, you're going to try to understand where someone's coming from so that way you're not formulating um, an, a premature, immature reaction to right. what's being said or right. information given to you. Right, absolutely. So, yeah. And sometimes I fall into that category. I do. Sometimes I, um, you know, I'd be like, you know, I didn't, you know, she want to cancel on me last minute. Like, you know, sometimes things happen. Yeah, in life. sometimes I, re- I ain't gonna lie. I've, I've replaced my empathy with ego many a times. Yeah. Like, oh, no, nah, you know, too. where I could have stopped and tried to understand. I'm like, man, fuck this, bro. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But, like you said, you know, all you can do is uh, get better with the next one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I try we to learn go learn from how to communicate. Learn from bad communication. You yeah. know, bad communication is a form of of communication. communication. Problem you is, <laughs> it's, the, it's 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 that opposite day of communication. I hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> bad communication is communication too. Sometimes people can you know even um, you know, bad communication sometimes can show you where that person is too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been in many, many situations where someone has just opposite dated me all day. Like, don't do that when you expected me to do that. OK. Why would you tell me not to do it if you wanted me to do it? Right. Like, right. That's the one thing you wanted me to do. Why would you tell me not to do it? I'm going to do everything else now because you told me not to do this. So we try to figure out what you wanted. Right. But again, you know, some people are like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like someone who's pushing you away. Someone, Kiss me now. How? <laughs> you pushing me. How? <laughs> Right. Make it make sense, please, you know? But then to those that it don't make sense to, it makes perfect sense. Right, because they're in their world. Not even, a, but there's a group of people that be like that. It's like they'll be around each other just not making no sense, but it makes sense to them. And I'm like, how? Okay. Again, my communication style is to have my actions and my verbals meet so that way, you know, the words can be the example of my actions and we can move forward. But I watch the way you move. You can say what you want to say. You can say it to who you, you want, want to say, say it to. to. Yeah. I'm watching the way you move. I'm, by far, I don't want to be the one to judge nobody because they, they, they're, they're opposite day-ish communicators. But, <laughs> hey, if it works for you, it works for you, man. Right? Because that, that's, to me, it's difficult. And I'm not, I'm not about difficulties. It's, no, I'm trying to make life easier. It's already difficult enough waking up and breathing, trying to make sure I don't choke on my spit in the way out the, out the bed or something. No, it's just, look, I got other things to worry about. I'm not trying to decipher your Da Vinci Code. It's too much. Mm-mm. Right. Oh, man. Communication. You know what I really hate? I hate people that... Uh... <laughs> I hate people that uh, don't have proper etiquette in communication. Like, all right. Okay. Got a friend that I've been calling for like days and, you know, he's not answering the phone. So I'll take it as, all right, my response is I, I can't be an empath in a situation where there's nothing, no knowledge of being, you know, presented. So if I'm calling you and you're not answering the phone, I'm going to just stop calling you. I'm going to just stop calling you. But then I'll, I'm guaranteed to get a message because it's happened before we've lost communication and like weeks later. Yo, bro, man, why you ain't calling me? I've called you like 17 times, dog. You just don't answer the phone. Like, don't make it mean like I'm the bad guy. I'm, I'm, the fact that you see my name on top of the, the screen, Miss Call, there's evidence that I called you. And if you need me to, I'll screenshot the, uh, the, the, the call log to show you we missed contact. And it wasn't me not communicating with you. It was you just either dodging or whatever you're doing. Sometimes you sleep. Sometimes you work. I don't want to judge what it is. But I feel like if you're not putting in the effort to communicate back, I'm going to just dead communication. But then I'm the bad guy when I do such, you know? And I hate that because I don't want to be vulgar towards nobody, it seems. At the same time, like, you know, I want to respect your time. Like, I want my time respected. If I'm calling you, I'm... Right, right, right. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm reaching out. And then if you don't call back, then clearly you didn't care enough to see what I was reaching out for. Nine times out of ten, I'm just calling out to reach out to check and make sure that you're okay. I'm one of those people that every two, three weeks, I'll send you a message. 
I'll hit you with a phone call. I'll even post something on my wall if, if it means that you're not going to answer the phone. Like, hey, you want to make sure you're alive, da 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 because, you know, it matters to me too. Right. And I feel like, you know, the etiquette in communication is to reciprocate. Right. And I feel like a lot of people nowadays miss that mark. I mean, I'm similar. Um, I'm only going to call you once. And if I call you, um, I will, to me, um, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt by throwing you a text message saying, hey, I gave you a call. Give me a call when you get a moment. Yeah. So if I don't hear nothing after that, I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Wash my hands with it. Absolutely. And you're right. Like, when people be like, oh, well, and you only called me once. How many times you Who want me to call, call you? you? Like, you knew I was, <laughs> you knew I reached out. You, you saw it. It was on your phone. Right. So-and-so tried to call you. You've got this missed call. Right. Your phone clearly wasn't off because it rang like 15 times before it went to voicemail. Right. So, you know, that's the indicator right. that your Everybody lines are working. Everybody knows. My grandma used to tell me that she used to, when we used to call people, um, she'd be like, if it rings six times, then they, they ignoring you. <laughs> yeah, they And that was you. back when phones were still on, the you wall. know, the kitchen wall. Right, right. But then again, I ain't gonna lie, I remember there was times when I was younger, I had to run from the other side of the house to get there, like, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> So I, I understand that. But nowadays, you know, your phone is in your pocket. Like, you know. Right. Oh, and then oh, the, the new age of communication. You got a lot of younger people that don't want to talk on the phone. And I'm like, you understand the phone was invented to talk on? They, like, they're texters. They're texters. They're, and you can't just text them on their regular number. You have to hit them in their inbox or on Instagram. And then you got to send the four-digit code you got for the message you sent them on Instagram over to their inbox on Facebook. I'm like, look. I can call you, have this conversation way faster. And then right. Nine times out of ten, it's probably something three minutes I want to say is be off the phone. That's all. Like, hey, everything good? Okay, what? So what do they do? The online thing is um, the Facebook stuff is so that your number isn't out there? I guess. Because, I mean, I feel like if anyone has a, a line on you, they got a line on you, whether it's your phone number, whether it's your social media, whatever. They want to communicate with you. They're going to try to communicate with you. And I just feel like people are so... They, they try to filter their... I guess what they're dealing with at the time. And if that's the case, then I mean, whatever. But it's always just proper etiquette to just respond. Like, I feel like that's when people start to replace their empathy with ego. Right. And that, that'll be the, the battleground that begins all of that. And you find yourself, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why people do it. I'm like, look, if, if you call me, only person I'm not picking up for is the bill collectors. And I know who they are. <laughs> Don't and call the 1-800 or one 866 Or anything that says spam likely <laughs> on my phone. But then again, I've learned to even pick some of those up because now being in business, like the, 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 the shop number, anyone that calls comes to my phone. So it says spam likely from all these different area codes. And if I say no, I'm turning down business. So I've got to come out that zone of not even answering the... Matter of fact, I remember when freaking... Who was Xfinity called? And I was getting ready to leave the phone dead. I'm like, something said answer the phone. And walking through my bill, like, yo, you can save a whole lot of money by bringing your cell phone over to us. And, da, 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 da. and had I not answered the phone that day, I'd have been still paying a whole lot of money for Wi-Fi and phones. I'm like, yo, dog, maybe it's just a better thing to answer your fucking phone. Right. And if you right. don't want to talk to the person, verbally tell them, stop calling me. <laughs> it's just it's simple. Right. It's simple. So let me stop being... I feel like it's cowardice, really. Let me stop being a coward. Let me just tell you, hey, I don't want to talk to you right now. Hey, I want to go jerk off in the corner. I don't feel like communicating with you. <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. Like, look, stop being a coward. Stop hiding behind your phone. Like, it's unnecessary. You can always be legitly honest about your intentions. As a matter of fact, I think when you're legitly honest with your intentions, you clear a lot of shit up really fast. Like, if I don't want to talk to you and I tell you I don't talk to you, cool. You know better than to call me back. Because then the next time you call me back, we got a problem because I just told you I don't want to talk to you. Right, right. <laughs> I just right. told you I don't want to talk to you. For real. So I know a big um, thing that a lot of my my close friends tell me is that, um, so for instance, I don't have a voicemail on my, um, yeah. on my phone. And, um, and it's for a purpose. It's for a reason. <laughs> I don't want to hear a whole paragraph about why you called me. I'll see that I missed your call on my phone. And, and if it's back. that important, throw me a text message. Yeah. Let me know. To me, I feel like voicemail is just, it's a waste of space. I but a lot of people don't feel like that. A lot of people be like, I was trying to leave a voicemail on your phone. Oh, sorry. sorry. I called you right back. How can I help you? 
we're here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, but I, I get a lot of people that, that, that annoys them. I know. I, I try to leave my voicemail open. I know because now with Apple phones, you don't get the option to just have a voicemail set up. Like, it'll go right to your phone's voicemail now. And it'll send you a text message of what they said. And I'm like, oh. Oh, see, mine's ain't set up, so I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah, oh mine's so set it, up. it's like a paragraph now? Yeah. You can read it? You can read it. So yeah. it's like a text message. So it's like a text message. So just throw me a text message. <laughs> I think it's easier for them because they're talking, so they get the, you know, but then, you know, Siri and her understanding of what you probably said was completely different than what the hell they actually said. And I'm looking at stuff like, this is not even English. Oh, man. Let me call this person back. Cause right. Mine was um, because, like you said, um, you know, if companies call Comcast calling my phone trying to sell me a phone type thing. You know, I don't, they don't leave messages and it'll be them automated things. So then I'll have to go through mad voicemails. And of, delete and stuff, yeah. Right, exactly. And I think that's why a lot of people do ignore the phone because it's like, you know, you have to filter out who you want to deal with, who you don't want to deal with. It's just easier to not answer and only put the call out when you're ready to put the call out. And that, that's the case. You only need half a bill. <laughs> <laughs> True. You only need half a bill. You don't need the whole thing. Right. But, right. Uh, I feel like, you know, when I, when, I, when I get those messages, after that whole happenstance, I'm definitely starting to look at these, these, these companies, different bill collectors. Because even me trying to get my credit together sometimes, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get this together. And the bill collector called, like, well, you know, you owe us. And I'm like, ah, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to get, call I myself. I got other things on the line. I got other things on the line right now. I'm trying to fix my credit. Not y'all, get out my face. <laughs> right, right. Put it in the back of the bus. Yeah. And I don't feel like dealing with it right the now. The bad part so. is if I just dealt with that, it will fix my credit, so it's like, ah, uh, you know Right, what? right. I feel like, you know, we, we, we self-sabotage with these new communication devices and stuff like that. But, you know, that's Yeah, the- these kids nowadays, all they do is know how to communicate through. If you're, if they could, don't know how to have, like, face-to-face conversations. Yeah, they do Everything is online over the phone. There's babies that, are walk- that can't even walk, but yet are stuck in an iPad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um... All the kids in my house are stuck in TikTok. Like, TikTok. If, if we, you want to tell them it's time to eat, you got to make a TikTok and put it in their inbox. So, it's time to eat, motherfuckers. And you got to do a dance and send it to them. Right. And they come running out. It's right. just too much. <laughs> my, my, my thing that I'm seeing the difference with uh, in this generation is, um, just like you said, like even something simple. They're so used to being in their phones that when you go to sit down at the uh, kitchen table and have an actual conversation, yeah. they're stuttering. They don't know how to find the words. Why? Because they sat there on a phone yeah. and knew how to type things up and not have an actual, actual conversation. conversation with somebody. Yeah. I see that with... So, I guess I got my oldest daughter in the house and she's going through her growth spurts and, you know, guys are noticing her and stuff and she has her little friend that she hangs out with and everything and she's real modest to herself. But when she shows us the messages it's got to be sending her, like, I love you. I'm like... You had all day to say that. You waited till you got on the phone to be behind the screen. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like you know, y'all were hanging you out literally. Tell her how you felt right there in front of her. Like, Why? Y'all been... Because they hide behind the screen. Yeah. And, and because they probably don't know how to just come out and talk and say they don't know how to have a conversation. That first, that face-to-face conversation definitely comes with a level of confidence that I feel like you know technology masks. Because you can be who you want to be on the other side of the phone. Absolutely. This catfishing. <laughs> just, this catfishing nowadays, man. Like, oh, I'm this person. I'm this kind of, I talk this way. I walk this way. I own this, that, and the other. You see him in person. It's like, you portrayed none of that in real life. You lie. Right. You get <laughs> confident behind a screen. But I feel like that mask gives you that false confidence. And I feel like, you know, we got to learn how to, I guess, first get that confidence just to communicate and communicate art- articulately. Talk, talk, have a conversation, have talk. a regular conversation. Like, and, and, and mean what you say, say what you mean. Like, don't just say things because you think people want to hear it. Right. <laughs> say right. things you mean, mean things you say. You'll find your crowd out there. Believe me, your crowd is out there waiting for you. You're like, oh, I like that person. The person who don't make sense when they're talking and does the opposite. If that's who you are, there are people out there just like that for you. I'm promising Absolutely. you. Absolutely. But just, you know, get out there and communicate, you know. Stop uh, not communicating because we ain't getting nowhere as a species not communicating. Right. I got a dog that understands English and I love it <laughs> because I tell him what to do <laughs> and he does what I tell him to do. That's communication. When he has to go to the bathroom, he runs to the front door, he gives me his little <laughs> cool. That's his communication to me because he don't speak English. Right. But, you know, we effectively communicate. You know, I'm around people that I can, I'm around beings that I can effectively communicate with. 
I can't effectively communicate with you. There's people out in the world that fall in love with each other. Over communication. That can't communicate with each other. One girl speaks Spanish, she'll speak English. They can't, but because of their body language. Yeah, they understand each other. They, uh, they exactly. That good old fashioned body language. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the body language and the connection, um, there's more than one way to connect than just, you know, being able to, you know, understand someone's language. And R. Kelly said it best, you know, your body's calling me. Like, he wasn't lying when he said that dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk about R. Kelly on here. No, okay, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, man. yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, communication is, uh, we, we also learn from communication. Um, Primarily, too. Like, I use that to... Can you use an example, like, what's going on out in Hollywood, Monique. Monique um, went through what she went through with Oprah and all of them. Whoa, whoa! What happened? What? Yeah? You didn't hear about that? No, why am I so, like, I told you, I'm not being communicated to. What's going on? <laughs> right, and then now, turn around, um, then when they did the color purple, now there's um, cast members in the color purple that are saying, like... Oh, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, that she did... It, but then rem when Monique went through it a few years ago, they mm -hmm. blacklisted her. They they sat there and was like, no, shut her, shut her up, shut her down, and yeah. everything. Um, and now that it's happening to other ca other people in a whole nother project... Mm -hmm. Now the communication, now right now the community, now everybody want to be like, oh, that's what Monique was saying. So it took for them to do that to numerous people in in Wait, the so limelight. Did Monique do that to, uh, I mean, Oprah do that to Monique with, um, what's that movie? Uh, Precious. Precious? Yes. Oh, wow. Because Precious was a strong, I mean, everybody in that movie just did not look. Like they were, I mean, of course you're healthy. They just looked horrible in the movie, but <laughs> they needed to look that part. And you had to pay me a certain amount of money to look like that. Cause, it whoa. was an independent film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Precious was an independent f film. And, you know, they didn't have, you know, independent films, you know, they don't have a big, money, yeah, they don't got a big budget. In between. But what Monique was asking for, I, uh, even when she was going through what she was going through, when everybody was against her, I, I, I got it. I was like, why would you, she's right. I'm not doing no free publicity for anybody. You're yeah. going to pay me, I, you know? Yeah. And on top of it, she was up for, you know, a, a, a award and everything. Yeah. And, um, you know, she was, she's been in the industry for, you know, many years. And them years. awards, them, them things definitely up your resume. When they up your resume, you got to up your price. So if so, think about it. If she if she um, if she doesn't, she's an Academy Award winner. When was the last time you've seen her? I haven't. Right. Other than on YouTube, because Oprah <laughs> blocked that shit real quick. She was like, "Oh, you don't want to go do no press conference? You ain't getting no more work." Ooh, you grimy communication. Harpo. You grimy motherfucker. And Monique was out here telling us what was going on, and we had to sit there and wait for a whole another project to come about. For others to come and tell Pick up us, on it, yeah. and now everybody's like, "Oh shit, that really maybe Monique, what Monique was saying was true." Damn, and that sucks too because she was literally telling everyone, and that she happened was. a lot. That back to R. Kelly when it, he was trying to marry R. Aaliyah, Kelly, right? Right. <laughs> and a lot right? happening, and then he finally goes to jail for like decades later, like. But it was being told to y'all that this is what he's doing, but y'all out here. I seen the tape. That was him. That was him. I actually bought that DVD that day. <laughs> I remember I was at the freaking rest stop in, in Maryland. And dude was like, you want to see the R. Kelly sex tape? I got it right here. Hell yeah, how much? Five dollars? No problem. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, oh, dog. Oh, man, that's him. That's, I got, him. that's what I said, too. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. And I that. don't understand how a, a, you know, a court of law didn't see what, what I see. But okay. Okay. I feel like even with the court of law, like... They're manipulated. I mean, and that's the other part about it too. You got so much manipulation in between that sways people in the wrong, the wrong way. The wrong thing sways people the wrong ways, and it gets way more power than the communication put out. You know, right? So the narrative gets to be switched and everything else. Like, all right, in the court of law, we didn't find him guilty, but we saw the tape. He was clearly guilty. Right. Right. Got you. Absolutely. And oh, Eric, all these girls ain't gonna be popping out of the woodwork. And now saying, you know. Yeah. Poor Bill Cosby. Poor Bill Cosby. <laughs> we, we went from Monique to R. R. Kelly. Kelly to Bill Cosby. There's just a lot Bill of miscommunication. Cosby. There's a lot of miscommunication going on out here. 
And I need us to stop missing this communication because it's in our face all the time. It's just being said to you. You just got to pay attention. There's a whole lot that people just choose not to pay attention to. Just don't stop communicating. That's my thing, too. Yeah, don't stop you communicating. You know, um, uh, a lot of people, you know, once they feel as though they don't get their point across, they'll shut down. They'll shut down and shut up. Keep, keep communicating. Keep telling. Keep talking. Keep saying something. Yeah. You will, won't be the only one that has those feelings or those ideas out there. Yeah. Somebody out there is feeling the same way you are. Yeah. Wow. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> That's real deep. It's sad, isn't it? It's like you even say something and people are just going to misunderstand you. Right. Oof. Right. Or, you know, ju- just what you were saying, ju- judgment. I can imagine when Monique first came out and said it, everybody judged her for it. Like, how dare you speak upon these black figures that, you know, are at a certain caliber. Yeah. You know? I mean, shit, even more recent. You got Cat Williams. He just did this whole little Shay Shay thing, corner thing. And you got a lot of black comedians coming back at him. Like, but I'm thinking he's telling y'all something and y'all are missing the point. <laughs> right, right. Y'all are clearly missing the point. Especially when it came to the Cat Williams thing. Not that I took everything that he said, you know, on a chin or um, agree with everything that he said, but he definitely has some gems in there. He's got some gems in there. He's, he's not, I'm not going to say he's not lying. So I'm, not, I'm not there to tell you whether he right. is or isn't. But, you know, keep your eyes on the bouncing ball. A lot of what he says is going to get. One thing I know about Cat Williams and everything he says, he always predicts something or he says something that's happening at the moment and then years later, everything he said comes to fruition. So, I just feel like... But my only thing with him, too, is, yeah, you coming back and you talking to us, telling us, people tend to forget, like, for you to know this information, you had to be in the same room. What the hell was you doing? Tell on yourself, too. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You said that you was at the party and you opened up the door and seen that. Oh, you was at the party, oh, huh? You got the That's invitation? the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, he was at the party too. And then what did he say? He said, the only reason why people go to P. Diddy's house is, uh, f- uh, you know, for the limelight or for that. Yeah. And so you were there for the limelight? I thought you already had limelight. So what were you, you there for? for? That. See, you're judging that man. He's trying to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to judge. I'm trying to understand communication. All right. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I have questions to your questions. True. That's all. True, true. <laughs> That'd be the part about communication that also gets missed. You got to make sure you cover all your grounds, too. All your grounds. Like, oh. cross your T's and dot your I's and make sure you pronounce everything the right way because. Ah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a follow-up for all of this shit. Oh, man. How long have we been talking now? I'm, I'm looking at Drew over here with the, with, with the camera, just focused. I'm thinking we probably covered, what, 35 minutes so far? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, what else about communication can we talk about? I mean... <sighs> Forgive us, because these be impromptu subjects we just come up with. We was feeling we literally was like we need to talk about communication. Yeah, we were both sitting there, like we had a, a very awkward week with communication. Not to get into our stories, but we've right. had very awkward weeks with communication this week. Absolutely, and it was just on our heart to communicate with y'all what communication means to us. I mean, if y'all have anything I want to put into the polls when we put this up, please. Episode, Please put stuff up there. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Yeah, what do Let you us do? know what you agree upon and what you disagree upon. We are open book. Let us know. Let us know what you want to hear more about. Let us know what you, uh, what you side on. Yes. Let uh, us know. What you side on. I mean, come on. Communicate with us. We'll communicate back. You That's know? right. But at the sake of trying to push any more conversation. I think we should probably wrap this up. We, we, we got ample in here. We definitely covered our grounds today. You know what don't, you know what don't follow me communication-wise, so, you know, don't try it. Please don't try it. I'll let you know quickly. I'm, you're going to lose me because you confused me. And, you know, make sure you acting right around my, my, my first lady because she looking, she watching, she judging, okay? So make sure your communication is spot on. And, and y'all then. communicate well throughout this week. Don't stop communicating and communicate well. Definitely. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? That's it. That's it? All right. Well, look, from the cast of Faded, I'm your host, Gucci, my first lady. Danny. And we are out of here, son. Hi.
If you want the truth, Gucci gon' give it to you. If you want the truth, Danny gonna give it to you. If you want the truth, sincere gon' give it to you. Gon' give it to you. If you want the truth, Gucci gon' give it to you. If you want the truth, Danny gon' give it to you. If you want the truth, sincere gon' give it to you. Cause we're chopping it up.